My name is David Lorimer. I'm one of the program directors of the Beyond the Brain conference for this year, which is coming up in November. <clears throat> and I'm here with one of our speakers, Dr. Mona Sabani. Um, and I'm going to ask her a couple of questions. And the first of these is, how did you become interested in consciousness beyond the brain? Yeah, um, as a normally trained neuroscientist, I was not interested in that question for many years and didn't think it was possible at all to consider such a thing. Um, but my path is that I came through my cultural heritage. I'm Persian. And in our culture, we have a tradition of divination or tapping into intuitive abilities. And it runs in my family. My grandmother and my mother um, use practices to tap into that. And over the years, I just realized how accurate, um, inexplicably accurate they were about things, uh, new things that there's no way that they could know. And that set me off on a journey of investigating, reading, researching um, outside of mainstream science, because there were no answers in mainstream science for such a thing. Uh, and that's that led me to just a wide literature on uh, alternative models of consciousness that I had never considered, never thought were possible. Uh, and my really, my mind was blown. Um, and I found that those models probably better explain a lot of my experiences, my family's experiences, and those of many other people. So that they're worth considering, especially for a topic like consciousness, which is just such a big, hard topic for neuroscience to tackle. Yes, and you've explained your your journey, a very exciting journey uh, in your book. And and it's very interesting when you know, neuroscientists like yourself have these personal experiences and then find that you really have to widen your view. So what are you going to be talking about at the conference, Mona? Yeah, so I, I will tell my story a little bit, um, go into a little more detail than I did now of what launched me, it was it was actually a crisis. It was, uh, it just made it sound casual right now, but it was actually quite a crisis, first an existential one and then an identity one because I thought of myself, you know, first and foremost as a scientist and this started to unravel that um, foundation for me. So, and I'll talk about some of the evidence I came across that I thought was compelling that started to flip my worldview. Um, and then also, you know, as I was going on the journey, I kept tying everything back to neuroscience and started looking at all of the the normal mainstream research and realizing almost for the first time <laughs> that we had all these holes in neuroscience. Um, like there's all these data points that are, they're not even that anomalous. They're just things that we can't explain. Usually we explain it by saying it's neuroplasticity, but that doesn't really explain anything. So um, I, I'll go over a little bit of that, of some of the quote unquote anomalous or, you know, uh, not mainstream findings that started to flip me and then tying it back to the, you know, the holes that already exist in neuroscience um, and how those pull together for me to open my mind and be uh, open to other explanations. Well, that sounds very exciting. So anybody who's listening, make sure you attend Beyond the Brain 3rd to 5th of November coming up. And we'll very much look forward to seeing you there. And we'll be hearing more from Mona on that occasion. Thank you.